What's up everybody? Welcome back to 333 Motoring. Another day, another project. We got the F80 M3 uh, sitting right behind me here. Today we're going to be draining the coolant and refilling it with new coolant. The reason I'm doing that now is I've run out of coolant. Uh, oddly enough, in the computer system here on these F80s, everything's electronic. There's not even a dipstick in these things to check the oil and much like the oil coolant operates the same way but instead of giving me a, a warning that the coolant is low maybe top it off um, it allowed me to actually run so low that it triggered um, a couple different check engine lights one of which was um, air temp or coolant air was too hot so basically because the intercooler has coolant passing through it to cool the charge air the charger was getting too hot because of the lack of coolant. It wasn't really cooling it down from when it got dumped out of the exhaust side as it passed through the intercooler. So it put my car into limp mode, which is okay because I was only a couple miles from the house, but had it happened 45 minutes earlier, I would have been 60 miles from the house. So that would have not been very good at all. So that's why we're going to change the coolant today is I don't have any more. So, one thing I got, I picked this up from Schwaben. So doing a little research on it, as always, this is a vacuum fill kit. I don't know if you can see the components here, I'm trying to have them fall out. They'll be featured in the video a little bit more here, but basically this will allow us to pressurize the reservoirs for the coolant so we don't have to burp and bleed the system. There will be some of that that we'll touch on uh, later on, a part of the procedure from the uh, service manual of recommendations of what they recommend to get everything bled. But the first order of business that we're gonna do with this project is I'm gonna actually remove the front bumper because the auxiliary radiators are located on the driver's side and passenger side in the front. So those are the lowest points on the cooling system itself. So we're gonna pull the bumper off first. We'll go through that process. Then I'll have the ability to either jack up the car from the jack point right in the middle because I'll be able to get my uh, long reach jack underneath if I need to try to get coolant out. If not, I may jack it up on either side to make sure all of the coolant has been um, effectively drained from the system. And then we'll go through the uh, the vacuum fill and topping everything off. And in the F80s, there is two reservoirs. There's a reservoir for the intercooler, the charge system, and then there's a primary reservoir for the actual uh, radiator coolant system. So, with that said, let's get to work. So I'm choosing to drain the coolant from the auxiliary radiators on the driver side and passenger side. It's the lowest point in the cooling system. So by removing this attachment here we're going to be able to drain both the uh, low temp which is on the passenger side and the high temp uh, reservoirs on the driver's side so whatever side you're going to drain you need to turn the steering wheel outward or the wheel outward as you can see here because i'm doing the passenger side first that'll give you access and so you have to jack it up from the opposite side of the vehicle and then you're going to have to double back and jack it up on the other side again to drain the coolant that was trapped in the corner of the radiator, as you'll see we do here in this process. So we wanna make sure we get all the coolant out of the vehicle. Just take your time on this part. It does take a good half hour to get both um, high temp and low temp systems drained. So you'll notice here I went back to the passenger side uh, once I jacked it up on that side to get the other angle, and then I'll do the same here. So I have it still jacked up on the passenger side, we're gonna get the coolant out on the driver's side here, and then I'll come back around and I'll jack up the driver's side again to get the coolant that was trapped here on the uh, driver's side of the, of the reservoir. Now that the coolant is done draining, we're going to mix our new coolant blend, which is just 50-50 coolant to distilled water. 
So I'm using a gallon of coolant here to a gallon of distilled. I'm using the BMW brand coolant. If you have a preferred brand, go ahead and use that and follow those instructions if the ratio is different. Now we're going to set up our vacuum tool. Most of these are the same. This one's from Schwaben. You know, you can get one off Amazon or whatever. The, the function is all the same in all these things. So make sure you pick the, uh, the tip that has the airtight seal. So now we're going to build our pressure right here in the reservoir. And then once the pressure has been established, you're going to let it hold there for a minute just to make sure it doesn't have any leaks. And then you can put your vacuum or fill tool or fill attachment, depending on which vacuum tool you have, put in your coolant and start to fill this thing. So it'll just run the pressure down to zero. And once it's down to zero, it will be completely filled. So now that we have that almost topped off you could see it here we may need to top it off a little bit but now we're going to go to the bleeding procedure okay so here's a crucial next step so when we did the charge air system we're going to have to fire up the electric coolant pump and this is a step-by-step -step procedure to start that up so once it initiates it takes about 11 minutes in total, but four to five minutes to even start. You'll hear some little gurgling and burbling going on. Leave the lid off the reservoir. And we're going to carry out this procedure uh, right now. So let's go over the car and, and follow these steps and get this thing initiated. Now we're going to initiate the bleeding process by turning on the low beam headlights, turning on the ignition, but do not start the car set your heater temperature to maximum and the fan on the lowest speed and then we're going to depress the accelerator all the way to the floor for six seconds and this will trigger the low temp uh, reservoir bleeding procedure you hear the pump going down here somewhere Once it runs its course, we'll see where the coolant lands and then we'll top off the rest and this system will be fully filled and bled and then we'll move on to the big reservoir. Okay, so now we're ready to fill the high temp reservoir. So we're going to get our vacuum tool, build our pressure. Once it's established, hold it for a moment there to make sure there's no leaks. <clears throat> then you're going to attach the fill tool, run that pressure down to zero. That means the reservoir is completely filled and then just check it to make sure uh, you don't have to add or, or remove any coolant there and we're good to go okay filling process is complete for the high temp reservoir you can see in there there you go you see the toilet seat so we got a little bit submerged so I'm gonna pull I'll pull some coolant out of there we'll get it topped off and then we're going to go to the bleeding procedure, which I will show you the instructions here momentarily. Okay, so after pulling some coolant out, we're right on the money. So now we're going to start the bleeding procedure, which was, it's going to be nearly identical to the low temperature cooling system that we bled and we have to bleed that first so you can see here at the start before starting the bleeding procedure ensure the low temperature cooling system is filled and bled which is the upper reservoir which is the one we did first so we did the whole you know we filled it same thing with the vacuum uh, filler then we did the bleeding procedure which we're about to start now for this one but you have to have this reservoir um, filled and bled prior to the beginning of this process. So same steps here. Uh, you don't need a battery charger. It lasts 11 minutes. So unless your battery is, is completely well, you know, worn out or about to expire, you're fine. So switch ignition on, switch on low beam headlight, set heater to max, uh, temperature both sides and the fan on the lowest level. And we're gonna hold down the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor. That's how I did it the first time. 
or for the low temp uh, cooling system. And we're gonna hold it down for 10 seconds to initiate. So based on the, my first attempt with the low temperature cooling system, it was about four minutes or so before the actual uh, coolant pump kicked on and then started its bleeding procedure. Then that lasted about um, five minutes or so, five, six minutes, and then just kind of little a couple minutes of idle time in the beginning and, and a couple minutes of idle time towards the end of that 11 minutes. But um, it works. It's actually kind of a cool procedure. So let's get to the front of the car and get it started. Okay, so it says to have the cap on when the process is going, so I'm just going to put it on loosely. Okay, one thing that I did as well as a precaution is I buckled the seatbelt as well. I do this when I tune the car as well, and I do the flash tune to keep the seatbelt on so it keeps it engaged. So. Low beam headlights is right here in this mode. Okay. Ignition on. We don't want the car to start. Okay. Heater on. I already have it set to the highest because I just did this. Lowest fan setting. Heater on high. All right. So hold down the accelerator 10 seconds all the way to the floor one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay system started about four minutes in you can hear the pumps going Okay, so there you have it. The draining of the coolant, filling the coolant in the low temperature, high temperature, and then the bleeding procedure uh, for both those low, low temperature and high temperature reservoirs. Um, was pretty painless. I have to say that the vacuum fill tool has, is like a mandatory. Uh, I couldn't imagine it just topping it off and and having to fill it that way so and burping and bleeding the system i don't know how well the pumps would have done with that but the vacuum fill was incredibly easy all you need is a bucket and a tool which i will link in the description below along with the coolant that i got i got the distilled water from target you can get that anywhere um, overall the project was really straightforward easy to do uh, i did it i would say just the fill, the draining and filling, it took me about an hour. It took me a little longer to get the front bumper off, but I wanted to pull that off anyways to clean it up and, and have a lot of access to it, which has made it really easy to do. Didn't even have to take the wheels off. So if you liked the, today's video, please hit like, please subscribe. More content's coming out. Uh, another video coming up, we're going to do the spark plugs next. So the 50,000 mile service on this thing, we're going to change the spark plugs. So stay tuned for that. We'll catch you next time on 333 Motoring. See you guys.